And welcome to Monday. It is Monday again. Mark, what day is it? Um, it's Monday. Yes, Monday. What does that mean, Mark? It means we're on for the next hour and a half. Oh, you poor people. <laughs> <laughs> Hour and a half. Bloody beginners. We did two yeah. and a half on Thursday. We did actually. It was, I know. It, I was there. It, it was. It was. A, oh, you. You were, weren't you? Oh. <laughs> I like the say I've slept since then, but I really haven't. <laughs> you don't sleep, do you? No, I'm not allowed. <laughs> it's the voices. He won't let me. Uh, speaking of voices, we see what's coming up, shall we? Shall we? Yeah, yeah. Since I bothered okay. to do one earlier, you might as well show it. Okay then, since you bothered, I'm going to bother to press the button. Okay. Coming up tonight on Vape Trials TV. Matt Garish is here. He's looking at the Wismec Theorem. The perfect tank for the RX200. Let's see, shall we? Let's have a look in detail and see just how good it is. Marco looks at the Kangatech Pro Tank V4. It's made for sub aiming as well as mouth to lung. Comes with a brand new style RBA deck three coils with Clapton coils. And Matt's back again, looking at the Crixus tank. Comes with a ceramic tungsten coil. And we take one last look back at Vapor Expo 2016 at the NEC. All this and more tonight on Vape Trails TV. And we're back. Oh, there's a day for me. No, it's not uh, a day. What? No, I'm, no, no, I'm drinking gin. It's fine. It's all right. Okay. No, no, it's nothing to see. Move on. You, 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 you got, you got plenty on. of electrolytes in there. Pardon? Uh, You've got plenty of electrolytes in there as well uh, for your drone. Uh, are you insinuating that I'm a knuckle dragger like those daft twats at Ash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit controversial, Mr. Dawn. Would you like to elaborate on that? What's controversial about it? They've sold, they've sold, they've reckoned, right? In this press release that they threw out this morning, Ash reckons that only, only 9% of vapors use anything over 18 milligram. One, they've underestimated by a big chunk, right? I reckon it's closer to 20 to 25% of vapors use over 18 milligram. But what they've basically said is, well, it doesn't really matter because it's only 9%. I have one finger for Ash, and there it is. I've got one as well. They've, they've played, they've, they, honestly, they've played me for a fool. There's no fool like an old fool, so I've, there you go. I've, I've even blogged on it on my uh, Squarespace blog, the title of which I can't remember now. The sun also shines, that's it, because it's a play on my name. No, I mean, seriously, honestly, truthfully, I would say what it was, but apparently you're not, you're not allowed to say things that... Uh, Rhyme with twunt's trick. Don't know why. Shocking it is. Yes. Morph, um, Morph, Morph has just said in chat that they are window licking, I can't read trumpets. Yeah. Sputnik trumpets, gonna... I think that was. Sputnik, yes, I'm yeah. Not... yeah. Sputnik trumpets. I'm not, I am not going to get personal about it. I am severely and horrendously disappointed with Ash. I honestly thought they had more sense about them. I honestly thought that they might be a bit more compassionate because they keep saying that the only reason that they do what they do is because of this compassion they feel for smokers and they want them to be healthy. And then they go and do a, 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 they do a trick like this. I seriously, honestly, nah, no more, no more. Just well, the no thing more. is, if they're saying that 9% of vapors, so they're talking about current vapors, it's not, it's not, them that are going to be using the higher strength at first anyway it's the people who want to come off smoking and go to vaping they're going to need a higher strength and then yes. those people that have been using 24 and and 20 for time they're going to want to keep still using that let us let us talk about this sensi bobbly i remember a donkey's young ago when silk cut came out and everybody was saying oh they better for you whether they were or they weren't is immaterial but it was a case of well i'll get a pack and try them and seriously, you needed a bread poultice on the back of your neck to get a dry out of them. And when you did get a dry out of them, it was like smoking a fresh air fag. Waste of time. They didn't satisfy, so you didn't carry on with them. Effectively, when somebody decides to give e-cigs a go, they're changing their brand, aren't they? That's what mm -hmm. they're doing. 
We're not talking about, oh, I'm going to try and quit smoking. You're just changing your brand. It's the easiest way to look at it. So they go and get something that's going to be TPD compliant, which means it's got a pissy little two milliliter tank, which is neither, neither use nor ornamental, because as Fergus Mason pointed out earlier on during the course of today, and we've said this before, you get down to just over a mil left in, you know, so that the, 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 the cotton, the wick holes, the slots, aren't fully covered and then you've got gurgly gurgly and all of a sudden it pisses juice out all over the place and leaks so you've got to keep them full now if that's the case they reckon that the average vapor these days uses four miller liquid well they might if they're doing mouth to lung but if they're doing mouth to lung they're going to need 18 milligram or higher much higher in a lot of cases so in that situation that one doesn't apply and if they're using sub 20 milligram then they're going to fill the bloody tank up 20 times a day the same as i am i'm getting through 20 mils of juice with tpd compliant liquid it's ridiculous seriously honestly and truthfully i shall be face to face with some of the folks from ash come june and there's going to be some stern words spoken and i suspect i'll not be alone but the bug is down a turn up now Seriously, spunk trump, it's not the word. <laughs> Jizz weasels. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody said, Gary Dibley, Gary Dibley. Gary hey, Dibley. Gary Dibley, Gary Dibley. Next week, next week, not next week, next month, Gary Dibley's joining IBVTA in, in, a, in, a, in an official capacity. He is. Congrats, Gary. I cannot think of a nicer fella for it to happen to. I have been in touch with IBVT and told them to look after you and return you the way we sent you. Properly polished. Ready, ready. And with a, uh, uh, yes, and with a fresh nappy on. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't want the dirty dibbly coming back. IBVT is now to be swamped by innuendo. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so after that then, so we have the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after that, bombshell. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, chat we're talking about it. We have yeah, to cover it. Yeah. Why of course not? we did. Why not? I'll no. swear properly on Thursday. Okay. No, that's not Mark. Mark? Hello. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were playing a sting. I did. <laughs> I thought, I, I thought oh, he was doing you? an impersonation of a dog with a hair lip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just actually, I was pulling up the little graphic that I did earlier that um, we haven't got up, so I was just pulling that up so I can have a look at it. Yes, um, there was been a story floated around on the old Facebookery um, from Daniel Jenkinson, and their shop, uh, which is uh, Vapor Trail, was broken into again. This is at Seaford, uh, fourth time in under a year that they've been broken into, um, and the last time the apparent kids, the kids, got a caution. Um, we've got uh, they, they put some uh, some footage on YouTube which I've um, I've pulled down and then I've slowed it down a little bit. So if you do recognise the the two youths in this uh, bit of VT, um, take a look at the shoes as well because they're quite distinctive. I feel like I'm on Crime Watch all of a sudden um, and uh, presenting not as a, a uh, you know person who's been looked at. Um, but yes, have, have a look at the VT. <laughs> so, Dave, have a look at the VT. Play it out, Matt, please. Oh, play it out, Matt. <laughs> Am I yeah. playing it out? Okay, I'll play it out. <laughs> play it out, please.
Okay, that's some footage. Mark, talk about that footage. We, I, I, I've seen it once before. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that struck me when I saw it was it didn't take much. Um, which, if you're going to go to the bother of smashing a front window and then smashing a display cabinet, at least have the decent to steal everything. Um, no, joking aside, they obviously were very opportunistic um, and didn't take very much. But, you know, a, a, a brand new window and a new display cabinet and replacing the stock that was stolen is going to cost. Um, and, you know, it's going to come to a point where if shops get repeatedly broken into, then they just won't get insurance. Um, so the, the trainers or the shoes that one of them was wearing, they were quite distinctive um, with a kind of distinctive sole. Black, so you do, Black Adidas Flux, according to Sean O'Toole. Do you, oh, sold, do you, are, sold, so. do you, do you solder with them? <laughs> are they sold shoes? Them, no. Oh, so if okay. anyone out there does does know you know does know who these guys could possibly be, then you know get in touch with whoever Crime Stoppers, one hundred and one, whatever. Do um, you know the big shame? What's there that? was enough glass sticking up that they could both have slashed their femoral arteries, yes. and it's a great bloody shame they didn't. Yeah, there was quite a lot of glass there, um, but you know I thought we'd we show that and see if we could uh, help in any way because it's not good. It's people's businesses and livelihoods here. Uh, little bloody little tour rags like that. Little scrotes like that want a good smacking. They only deserve what? No, good smacking's too good for them. What they, what needs to happen to people like that is they need to be marched up to the window that they broke. They need to be made to lick their lips and then stick them to the window. And then you have two great big hairy bikers like me with red hot porkers that we march up and gently thrust up their assholes until they whinge for their mothers. And then, only then, do you give them a good hiding for whinging. He's yeah. saying that over a pipe, so he's got authority. Yeah, just, just hope you. to God that Dave Dunn never becomes a justice of the peace. <laughs> I'm telling you now, if I was a justice of the peace, nobody on my patch would ever do anything wrong, because I don't care. <laughs> Well, anyway, the message yes. there is, if you do know of anyone that, uh, that could possibly be, then let the appropriate authorities know. Indeed so. Bastards. This has yes. been a public service announcement by Vapor Charles TV. Yes. Uh, and, yes. and uh, Steve, it did feel five minutes, which is quite good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the joker that keeps on giving. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's almost seamless. So, Matt, yes, what have Matt. we got next? Um, apparently, there's some bloke called Mark Green who's looking at some uh, Pro Tank version four from Kanga. Oh, is, is it that one? Might I don't that know. One. I can't see him. Oh, that one. No, that I one. didn't see that. Can you see it again? Yeah, yeah that, that one. one. That one there. Yeah. Oh. Not this though, because we're looking at this next week. Right. Are you the bloke who did the review on the Pro Tank V4? It's coming up. Yeah, yeah. Have a look at it. It's a great guy. Oh, okay then. We'll have a look, shall we? Is um, he? I didn't put a number he's on it. Anyway. Okay, it, he's look. not half the man he used to be. <laughs> on that bombshell. For those of you who follow me on either Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or all three, you'd have noticed I tweeted a picture of this on Monday. And it's the Kangatech ProTank V4. Uh, and this arrived on Monday. So what I thought I'd do is a quick look. And then later on in the week at Vapor Expo, at the NEC Birmingham, uh, we'll be looking at it and talking to my colleagues about it because I'm going to be using it from now until then. Um, it is a new design. It has a top side fill um, as opposed to a top fill. It, it's the top, but it's the side. Um, it comes with a ceramic 0.5 ohm atomizer, a 1.5 ohm mouth to lung atomizer, and also a new design on the RBA deck, which comes pre-coiled with two Clapton coils, and you also get some spares in the box too. So uh, let's go down there and have a good close look, and then we'll come back and I'll uh, give it a vape. So here we go, the uh, the Pro Tank V4 from Kangatech uh, arrived in my sticky little hands yesterday. So uh, this is going to be a quick look, uh, and then we will have a much better look at it um, when we're at Vapor Expo. So uh, let's just uh, take it out of the box. Similar kind of affair to the rest of the kind of sub tank range with this slidey in the outy boxy. Um, so we'll just put that to one side. And you will see in the box 
you get your pro tank you get the uh, little instructions that go with it you also get your little card so you can check that it's an authentic device by going to the Kangatek website you get the obligatory little packet of Japanese organic cotton um, but on this device what you get is not a blue screwdriver not a white screwdriver not even a black screwdriver you get a little allen key yes for the RBA deck you get uh, four spare grub screws and you also get two Clapton coils uh, and they are going to fit in the little RBA unit and I'll show you that in just a second you get a total of three heads for this this is the mouth to lung atomizing head uh, and this is a 1.5 ohm as you can see fairly standard uh, it's round as opposed to the original square ones that came with the sub tank inside here there is a ceramic coil uh, which has got a resistance of 0.5 ohms so that is for sub ohming and the 1.5 is for mouth to lung they're trying to use the same tank for two different purposes which is very good and then this is the new design for the RBA deck yeah let me just uh, move this all to one side and we'll have a little zoom in so this is the new design RBA deck as you can see it's round uh, with some detailing some knurling here on the bottom uh, and some little indentations around the top section holding the knurling you unscrew the top and you will see it is already pre-coiled with not one but two Clapton coils and like I said in the little bag you get a further two ready built Clapton coils along with four spare grub screws and they are tiny 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 uh, and then of course the Allen key for you to use um, and you'll just see here look that's on the side of the deck are where your four grub screws go um, and they are to obviously hold the top and the bottom of each Clapton coil so top one side bottom one side and then bottom one side top one side so you've got enough room and you're not having to muck about trying to get two posts through the same hole which is always a difficulty I have to say um, so that is going to be interesting I've never actually seen up close and personal before believe this or not a Clapton coil until today um, I've not bothered with making them because they are just too fiddly for me um, so there you go uh, and they look very nice so what we'll do is we'll just see what the resistance of this is um, and I'm going to start off by using the 0.5 coil that came with the actual tank but let's take a little close look at the tank and here is the tank itself as you can see airflow on the bottom now in the old days this would just keep spinning around now it's got a little tag little little bit here that just stops it from moving so it's fully open and then anywhere in between until fully closed on the top they've got a new design drip tip as you can see fairly wide it's stainless steel and delving at the top some people don't like stainless steel drip tips so they've kind of compromised a bit and made a uh, made a combination stainless steel um, base and Delrin top it is a 510 connection with a fairly wide o-ring there to keep it in place and you'll see there it has got variable airflow um, not unlike the TFV4s um, that have the airflow on the drip tip that I never use to be fair <laughs> but it is there for you should you wish so you can keep it closed off or again you can open it this one just spins around as opposed to having a little lug to stop it from moving and that just fits in the top now this is a top filler uh, and they do say it has a child lock uh, and the child lock is it's rather ingenious uh, I guess what you have to do is you have to twist the top section and keep twisting it and keep twisting it and keep twisting it to unlock it 
once you've unlocked it you then get access to your filling area which is here and you simply move that in the direction of the arrow or opposite and you get a rather large hole there in order to um, fill your juice so it doesn't matter if you're using a needle tip or if you're using a standard um, bottle really that it's going to fill quite nicely and then when you've finished you simply twist it back the opposite direction push your cap down and then lock it shut all well and good very easy um, not going to exactly come apart very quickly so you're not going to uh, knock the top and um, spill juice I have done that with a TFB4 I have to say uh, it's been in my pocket gone to one side gone on the wrong side and just flipped over the top and then juice has leaked out from the top um, so that is a fairly robust anti-leakage um, setup there I have to say so to uh, change your atomizer it's a uh, bottom screw take that off there's your tank and then you can unscrew the atomizer that's in it and this one has got a kind of a gray gray black ring on the bottom um, whereas the mouth to lung 1.5 ohm has got a red band on it um, so they're also a slightly different as well because this 0.5 has got a different shape on the top um, so you can uh, tell the difference between the two um, it's also slightly different in the way of width so this is the 0.5 ohm and this is the 1.5 ohm so it's very slightly different and very slightly different in the length as well if you look against them um, you'll just see there but they, they obviously both fit in uh, and then the RBA deck has got a red band on but you can't really mistake that about anything apart from the RBA deck so let's just put this on the base and we'll see what the resistance of the coils are uh, I'm just going to put it on the Rolleau which is what I'm going to use it on the twin Claptons are coming in at 0 0.41 0 0.41 ohm resistance which is uh, rather good so I'll take that off for now what I'll do is I'll build this um, at a later stage and uh, I shall let you know what I think of that bit um, but for today and for the rest of the week what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the ceramic 0.5 ohm resistance coil which is this one as you can see it's got two large juice holes that go into the wadding um, on one side and then two smaller ones it does say on there Kangatech 0.5 ohm and then it also says here ceramic you're not going to see that on here um, it's that really really faded writing I wish to do it a little bit a little bit darker for uh, those of us that um, have to use very focals <laughs> these days um, yes what I'm going to use to test it on is some muffin man it's high VG uh, and this is three milligram which is why I'm going to use this it's just here um, and it means that I can do some nice lung inhales with this um, and not get too nicked so I'll just um, put a couple of drops on Just let that soak in a little bit give it a helping hand and then we'll just put the base back on and now we'll see what the filling is like I'm going to close the airflow first unscrew the top section pull that back and then slide the slide it away there we go so we're in there and then now see that's too big <laughs> a 
that is too big to fit this particular device but it's okay I can just drip it in from the top and I'm going to fill this all the way because I'll definitely vape all of it right so I have just clean the little drip that was there and uh, we're going to close this down so we're going to just turn that there we go and then push the top down and lock it shut and away we go and that is more or less full of very yummy juice I have to say the drip tip is quite loose on the um, airflow so uh, just be careful you're not going to knock that so we've got it on the rollo now it's coming in at 0.77 on here um, let me just put it on let's put it on the coil master and the coil master is giving me a resistance of 0.67 um, the Rolo is giving me a resistance of 0.77 and the resistance of the coil should be 0.5 so which one's right <laughs> which one is right I wonder so I've got this at um, 17 watts at the minute so I'm going to turn this up I'll start it off at 25 watts and uh, see where we go Okay, that's primed the call a bit, so now we can turn it up. And we'll go up to 35. I've got the airflow fully open. Certainly produces, it is quite loud, I have to say. I'm going to turn that airflow down a little bit and turn my ampage, my wattage down a little bit as well less airflow in a few less watts I think so I've got that about half now about half open and I've got it set at 30 watts and that is still really really airy It certainly produces, but it is, it is a really airy device. I have to say, a lot airier than um, the sub tanks, and um, certainly more airy than the TFV4, uh, which is good if you want a lot of airflow. I think I need to pump up the wattage a little bit. I'll take it to 40 watts. So we're now at 40 watts. And that is really producing. Um, let's, uh, let's move the camera and um, I'll talk to you some more in a minute. And oh, welcome back. <laughs> I have to say, um, it really produces, as you can see from the opening shot there. Um, I've still got this set at 40 watts. Um, the resistance has now settled down. It's now saying 0 0.69. Um, so it's probably going to take a little bit of time to bed in. However, it would be nice to see the exact resistance um, as stated on the atomizer on a device. Um, it kind of gives you a bit more confidence to think well is my device out is the atomizer out um, maybe it needs a while to bed itself in um, before it gives the correct resistance um, but I have to say the flavor that I'm getting from this muffin man uh, which is a really nice juice and 
I've actually got quite a lot left um, <laughs> because I switch juices so often. Um, I'm never on the same juice all day generally. Sometimes I do. Um, but I like to mix it up so I've got all my devices. They've all got different flavours in because then I can just chop and change. And it makes juices last longer <laughs> because I'm not vaping it all in one go. Um, but I must pick up some more of this uh, when we are at Vapor Expo. Um, and you'll be seeing this after Vapor Expo. So hopefully I've got a little stash of juices um, that I can talk to you about. But let's go back to the Kangatek Pro Tank V4. Um, it's a really nice sleek design. Um, it obviously follows the same um, kind of design as the previous tanks in the range, the sub tank um, and the sub tank plus, and then onto the other sub tank. Um, they've made some differences, some changes, as you've seen. The top section that they are saying is anti child proof. Um, uh, I think a normal kind of toddler wouldn't necessarily know to unscrew it and then pull it up and twist to get to the juice, but it doesn't really matter because all I've got to do is take the bottom section off and the juice comes out anyway. Um, so that it's it's a good protection, I have to say. Um, whether or not it's going to deter uh, a child is, is debatable, really. Um, but I do like the fact that you have to do that so you can't accidentally... Um, knock the juice. Um, let me give you an example. I've got a TFV4 here uh, and if that's in your pocket and you happen to catch and um, this is a bad example because this is quite stiff but if you happen to catch the top in your pocket and it happens to be at an angle uh, then the juice does come out and it's happened to me once um, so I am very careful that I don't um, I don't knock that and I keep it upright in my pocket. But going back to the, uh, the Pro Tank because that's what I'm talking about. Um, I like the drip tip. Um, I don't mind stainless steel drip tips. I know some people don't uh, don't like them, um, but I don't mind stainless steel. I do like the Delrin drip tip. I'm not particularly bothered about the airflow on the top, and I do find that to be a little bit loose. I have to say, it doesn't take much to twist that around. So, if you do find you get an extra airy vape, check that first. Um, I like the airflow on the bottom. I like the fact that it's reasonably stiff when you're uh, when you're adjusting it but not too loose um, and not too stiff either so it's just about right really and I like the fact that it's got the little stop on there which stops you um, when you get to the end um, like I said earlier it is very airy and if I put it full bore uh, and so what I'll do I'll put it up to 50 watts uh, the Rolo I've recently updated the firmware so it will go to 250 um, but I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever take this device to 250 watts. Um, but that's just me. So, fire, it's uh, 50 watts. Yes, here we go. Uh, airflow fully open. No airflow on the top. It's a producer. It really is. And the flavour is there. That's the important thing for me. It's not so much that it can produce an immense amount of vapour. If I really want to go cloud chase and I can build a really low resistance um, dripping deck for that. What I do want to do though is I want to get the flavour of the juice that I'm vaping on. And if I don't get that then the tank is not for me. That's generally why I always use the RBAs and I build my own coils and I use my Japanese cotton and what have you um, because I know I'm going to get the flavour profile from the juice that I like uh, when I do that. But I have to say the flavour of this Muffin Man is coming through leaps and bounds on this ceramic coil. Um, it, is, it is very good indeed. I do like it. But as you can see, the, the vapour production um, is immense. It does get a tad warm, but I am running it at 50 watts. Um, I'm going to take the airflow down to half. And let's give it another go. And until what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try, before I do that, I've got the airflow fully open on the top and the bottom. 
So on the drip tip and on the bottom of the device for the airflow going up, I'll give that a go now. That changes the flavour. That does change the flavour. I'm going to turn that back down again. So no airflow on the top, but airflow on the bottom. And the flavour's back. So much vapour in this room right now. <laughs> um, yes, it does cool the vapour right down, I have to say, with it fully open on the top. But I think it leaves a bit of flavour. Again, it's a very subjective thing, my, my personal taste. Um, but it is, um, look, got a couple of mils already. Um, it is producing the flavour very nicely indeed. So, this is kind of day one. Uh, and you know from previous looks at that, that I do, I don't give a kind of definitive answer on anything until I've used the device for some time. So I've got, um, I've got a good few days until the weekend. Uh, today's Tuesday. Um, so at, we are at Vapor Expo Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Saturday or Sunday, I will update you on um, on how this is going, uh, and I'll quite probably coil up the RBA deck, and I might do that live on one of the shows. Um, I might have done it already. Who knows? <laughs> I'm recording this ahead of time, so uh, you know. Anything could happen between now and when you see this. Um, so for the moment, that's the Kangatech Pro Tank V4. At the moment, it's a thumbs up for me. I'm liking it a lot. Um, I shall let you know more as we go on. So as I uh, as I promised at the end of that little VT, uh, I would give you a, a little update on the Kangatech Pro Tank V4, uh, and I've been using it with different juice over the last three days here at Vapor Expo 2016. We're still here. Uh, we've finished our little bit we did earlier on, uh, which uh, went out today, which is Sunday. Uh, and uh, now I thought I'd just do the little bit that I said I was going to do. What I've not done is coiled up the RBA uh, deck yet. I will do that in the coming weeks, uh, and I shall bring you an update on that. But um, yes, this is uh, another heavy VG juice I have in here. I've, uh, I've had lots of different flavours and uh, different styles of juice over the last three days. Um, so uh, here we go. <coughs> and as you can see now, and as you saw before, it certainly produces. It's a lovely little tank, very nice indeed. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing around with the RBA deck and the Clapton coils. And I actually got one of the guys here to Clapton coil my TFV4, uh, which was rather interesting. A, he'd never done one before, uh, and B, it was quite a tight fit. Um, but uh, that's for a future show, yes. But anyway, the Proton V4, I'm liking it. It's a nice little tank, and like I said, I'm looking forward to playing with the RBA deck. Um, so for now, let's go back to the studio. It's very nice, and at the moment I've got it on the uh, the TC100, which we are going to be showing you very soon, because uh, we have a few of them dotted around, do we not, gentlemen? Oh, those things, yeah. Have we? Yeah. What, what Apparently these? we do. Um, hang on. Uh, uh, uh. Where did I put it? Oh, oh there it is. Ah. It's probably at the bottom of a box of curtains. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you are. Works all right, all right though. I'm going to try and go close up your cam. Right, I may break the world. We'll see. Come on, come on. Yes, look at that. Look. Okay, dear viewer, here's a sneaky... Yeah, here's a sneak peek. That is a Nautilus X on top of the Cool Fire TC100, which we'll be doing stuff on very, very shortly. Now, can I go back to main cam? No. Go back to main cam. Main cam. Oh, there we go. Main cam. I have. 
There we are. That's yes. sneak. Round of applause for Mark. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I thank you. <laughs> there we are. Sneakers peekers. Um, What's our schedule say now? What's it say? What's it say? What's it say? Uh, it says um, shoot everybody that's not called Mark of the Master. No, it, what it says oh. is, <laughs> it says um, it says chat followed by Crixus. Oh, okay. Uh, so we've got a decent chat then, have we, for the next thirteen minutes or so? No, five no, minutes. no. Well, we can fill five, five minutes. minutes. We do only need to fill five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Uh, right. we'll just in, fill in five fact, minutes. We are okay. we are now into Crixus time. To be fair. Oh, I might, I might give a little bit of a teaser. What else we got coming up? I've got the disguiser thingy here as well. It's, it's like a, it's, it's like a Rolo hasn't been on Marco's diet. And it's got, it's got a happy face and a sad face, hasn't it? It has. Here's the happy face, <laughs> and then here's the sad face. Uh, the things I do to amuse myself, you won't, you won't, you won't be annoyed. <laughs> Sometimes I do. There. Just no, a little bit. The north of a sex. You, Can you lung hit it? Can you lung hit it? Okay. This is it fully open at 20 watts because much more than that and it will go to pot. Pot? Can you put pot in it? Um, you could plot something. I don't know. Um, you kind of sort of can. Um, more on that some other time. Yeah, there we go. Right, have we filled five minutes yet? No, we haven't, have we? That was only a minute. Oh, good God. I've got this. What's that? It's a condom for the man that's got two of everything. <laughs> I got a rainbow one. Is it rainbow? Oh, a a rainbow. A rainbow the witty. Yeah. These are a brilliant idea. I actually do like these. Little little silicone battery condoms. So that you, if you don't like you know, the sharp corners of a box, you can... And that, that stops your trousers from getting set on fire. Sorry, in America, from getting lit on fire in pants, America. America. Pants, pants as pants well. Stops yeah. you. No, pants are what you put next to your ghoulies underneath no, your trousers. No, in America, pants are trousers, aren't they? Yeah. Are they? And, and fanny means something else as well. Fanny Apparently, pack. Well, yeah, I mean, somebody said something to, be, to me about a fanny pack, and I thought, well, what's Tampax got to do with it? Crixus. Dave, 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 <laughs> Dave, Dave, Dave. Did you get the uh, the bottle the bottle condom? Oh, I've got the bottle condom. Yes, on its on its on its little J string J clamp. Uh, C, yeah, whatever it is, the doodah. The That's doo -doo. fabulous for clipping for for clipping onto your jeans. And then you've got your bottle of um, hometown hero rice krispie treats. I found another one in my bag. I didn't uh, know. Oh, would would that be the one that some kind gentleman presented to you? Yes, it, it is indeed one that some kind gentleman presented to me. Yeah. Mm. I want I want a litre thereof. It's too yeah. nice. It's, it is nice, isn't it? It's not the 20th yet. You can plug me. Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> uh, right. So you wanted a Crixus yeah. vid, did you, Mark? Crixus vid. Well, you can do Crixus if you like, or you can go the theorem. No, let's, do, let's, do, let's, let's, do, the, uh, let's do the Crixus. I'm going to keep to the schedule. Because, okay. Yeah. Now, hang on, hang on, hang okay. on. Before you do anything, right? Judy G, corner. There's nothing on the telly. This is the best there is. You know this is true. Don't be daft. Right. Oh, I might delete that comment in chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So the Crixus. Now, now, now. I want to <coughs> mention that I recorded this video about a month ago. And things have changed since then, so I will go back to what's changed after the video. I'm winding up the pressy button finger. It's winding yeah. up, it's winding up, it's winding up, it's press. Hello, and welcome to another review. And this time we're looking at the Crixus from Horizon Tech. It is a ceramic tungsten coiled atomizer. Mmm, let's have a quick vape, a bit of a tease. Okay, enough of that. Let's go down and see how it works. It's a little bit different, this one. Okay, here's the Crixus. Crixus? Crixus? Whatever. In this box, it is from Horizon Tech. Now, we may remember those from such delights as the Arctic, which is one of my favourites, and uh, one of Mr. Dawn's favourites as well, I believe. But anyway, it comes in this plastic iPhone Apple type box thing. It comes with quite, actually, for once, handy instructions, but we'll get there in a minute. It comes with this box of Japanese or gothic, I was going to say, organic coil 
cotton and stuff. Um, which you may notice is actually in strips. It's very fiddly to get out there. Um, tweezers. Tweezers. Like so, yeah? So you get strips of cotton, which is interesting, but we'll get there in a minute. I'm skirting over this at the moment. We get here a replacement glass tube. And inside there we also get a little baggy of O-rings of various sizes, which is all nice and good. I probably won't need those for a while, I don't imagine. And then we get a replacement coil, which you will notice is still wrapped in its cellophane. I also cannot get this out, even though despite having trimmed my fingernails and appears to be years. Um, there we are, there's the coil. I'm going to show you this coil briefly. These are very different from what I've been used to before. Um, it's not immediately apparent, probably because of the uh, the way the camera's looking at it, but we'll get there in a minute. Let's just pop that to one side. And then we have the tank. Now, if you've used, say, Horizon's other products, like, for example, the Arctic tank, by the way, if it always comes to juice in it, send it back, because it shouldn't be like that. Um, if you've seen uh, Horizon's other products, like for example the Arctic, there's not much difference here at all. It's pretty much the same deal, um, pretty much the same base platform, whatever you want to call it. Um, in that, it is. Let's see if I can get to the other camera. There we are. Right. Hello. Am I in focus? Let's pretend that we are. So basically, you've got a replaceable drip tip on the top here like so and it's a top filling device so you just unscrew the top like so and away you go there we are oh the focus is all over the place on this isn't it and finally you get to the coils vastly so there we are so I'm gonna go to the manual focus because this is starting to get on my nerves Auto focus off. There we are. There we go. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, it looks nothing. It doesn't look remarkable in any way, shape, or form, does it? It does have a trick up its sleeve, though. I'm going to remain on this camera. And the trick up its sleeve is the fact that I've got juicy fingers. The way you recoil it now. These are ceramic coils uh, with tungsten running in them. And now Horizon reckoned that these coils will last you half a year. That remains to be seen. But what you do now, uh, there we go. So let's try and do it right handed. I'm left handed, so it's a bit of a pain. But uh, you basically undo this top sheath here. like so and there is our coil okay that is the coil itself okay you can't actually see the wire um, so you know it's dead easy to clean up you know and it, because it's it's ceramic you know it, it you can change flavor pretty easy so what you basically do to recoil these I'm not going to do it on camera now because well it's very fiddly but what you do is you get a strip of that cotton and you wrap it, and the instructions say you wrap it clockwise around there, two wraps round. Even in the, in the instructions, actually, let's just let's just get them out. It does actually um, give dimensions as well. So what we do, all parts except cotton are reusable. The lifespan of the heating part is about half a year. So we take apart the coil head cover, pull the burned cotton out. You can use your own cotton that has the same size, which is eight millimeters wide by 45 millimeters in length wrap the ceramic heating part with new cotton clockwise about two rounds please drip a few drops of liquid on the cotton which will make it easier to replace the cover replace the coil head cover clockwise check the tightness of the cotton then it's ready to use so and there's little pictures there this is very small but we kind of get the idea to clean it Twist and open the coil head cover. Take out the cotton. Turn on the battery, file the coil head until it burns out the remained substance and turns to white. Very good. 
so yeah that's basically it so I, whether I can get this, actually get this back on is another thing entirely but um, yeah that I wouldn't I, that needs to be re -wicked. that's all over the place now so that's another thing um, I'll keep you updated on that one so that's pretty much it really um, the actual coils I believe are 0 0.3 ohms and um, yeah they, they work quite well um, they are tungsten and well i'll tell you about this bit in the uh the talky heady section bit shall we so let's just go there now as opposed to looking at this desk because you know it's what's that bit of cardboard i'm gonna race it yeah enough of that right cinema so there we are um yeah it's it's interesting it's it's basically remember those vaping donut things um that were a ceramic polo mint for, for want of a better phrase um, a bit or a better comparison they have a ceramic sort of hoop with a coil running inside them this is essentially that but you notice there from the close-ups it's sort of slotted and it's very interesting actually oh, excuse me um, and um, it vapes incredibly well now like I said at the uh, in the close-up section there, this is tungsten, and as such, you can use it as temperature control, which I am doing right now. And what they do, uh, Horizon Tech actually do supply you. If you go on the website, supply you the someone's periscoping. <sighs> I should have left my phone downstairs. Anyway, um, yeah, basically, it's uh, a tungsten coil. But Horizon Tech actually supply the uh, the, the TCRs, the temperature um, coefficient, whatever. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, well basically what it is. I'll tell you what it is now. If you've got a DNA two hundred device, you need to input in eScribe software and create a new material uh, zero point zero zero four five zero. If you've got um, a Joytech device, like for example the uh, Rulure with the RX200 uh, board in it, then you need to set the TCR to be 0450. Uh, similarly with the um, the Smog X cube and things, you can do that as well. Uh, there's a fair number of mods that you can actually put in a custom TCR. So yeah, that's good. And so I've got this running in temperature control mode. It's currently running at 450 degrees Fahrenheit at 60, 70 watts. It's gone down to 69 point something. And I'll tell you now that the flavour on this is so clean. Really, really superb. Um, I taste no cotton. It's, you know, some some atomizers when you've got a, a, a new coil in there. I mean, this isn't by any means new. I've been running it for a few days now. But um, you, you get a new coil and you could taste cotton for a few drags. You know, this straight off the bat was absolutely lovely. It's not a massive cloud producing thing uh, at all. See, excuse me, I need to uh, have a bit of a slurp of drink there. It's not a massive cloud producing uh, tank, it, but it's not a slouch in that. You could almost as well get away from after long on this. All you've got to do is drop down the wattage, which I'm going to do now to, um, let's put this at a more pedestrian 20 watts. And let's close the airflow right off. Now, one actual thing of this, when you you can only turn the airflow control way, uh, ring one way or another. It locks in place, so to open it up, you turn it clockwise, therefore that screws the atomizer down onto your 510 connector. To slacken it off, you need to go the other way, of course, which will be anti-clockwise, because it's not clockwise. Um, which, if you don't hold it right, you will just unscrew it from your um, your mod so I've got that down pretty much as low as it will go I can't really close that down anymore this is a standard 510 drip tip actually it's a plastic one um, so you could put a, a narrower bore drip tip on this as well which I don't have I believe one to hand typically it's why over there and I can't be bothered to get it I need a reaching stick anyway Mm. It 
So you could, I mean, certainly with a narrow board drip tip, yeah. I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't, actually. Let's just bring it up a little bit more, because that's a bit too tight for me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say this almost passes muster from after long. I mean, give it a go. I mean, it's, you know, you can pick one of these up fairly reasonably. Um, yeah, I mean, I've opened it up again now. I've left it at 20 watts. You probably can't make that out on the screen, actually, but... Uh, even at 20 watts, it ain't bad, actually. <laughs> it still produces. Um, but let's put it back up to 70. Actually, I might put it at 60. See how that goes. Yeah, flavour, brilliant, brilliant flavour on this. Um, you know, for a tank, it's I, I've never heard of it before. It's come out kind of out of nowhere. It's up there, the Arctic. I really, really enjoyed the Arctic. Um, it holds a fair, fair, uh, fair amount of juice. Um, I'm looking at a website now, just trying desperately to find out what the uh, capacity is. Four milliliters. So it's not huge, but it's not tiny either. Hmm. Yeah, if you're curious about it, if you want to try a ceramic coil, I mean, you get two in the pack and they can be re-wicked and apparently last half a year. I will let you know in half a year if this coil, I'm not going to bother with the um, the one I pulled apart earlier. I'm going to leave that in this box. But um, I'll let you know in half a year if, if I remember. I may should set a calendar alarm or something, which will probably go off when I'm doing a video. Um, I'll let you know in half a year. How many more times can I say that? I'll let you know in half a year. Someone's going to rip the piss out of me for this one. Um, you know, if it's still working all right. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That's the uh, the Crixus. It's all right. There we go. So that was the Crixus. Now, I did say at the beginning before I played this that things have changed. Um, about a fortnight after I actually did that recording, things went a bit wrong. If I go to close Shappy Cam, Twice in one night, look at this. Good Lord above, lad, will you, will you, will you know no bounds? No, I don't, do I? Right, that is the uh, the initial coil that I did with the uh, the VT on, right? Look, look how burnt that is, it's just black. Um, it still has continuity, if I put a multimeter on it, but it will not fire at all. The ohmage is, the resistance is far too low, far too low. So, he says, come on, uh, that button there, right? This is the Crixus with the second coil in it, which I cleaned using the method outlined in the, uh, the destructions. The resistance has suddenly gone up from, what was it, 0 0.2 or something like that, something low, to 1.19. That's high. It is high. It is. Um, it still works. But that's just burnt. So... As an addendum to that bit of a uh, VT, eh, it ain't worth it. It just doesn't last long at all. It's not the six months advertised coil life on it, I'll tell you that. Um, I've, not, I've, been, I've been hunting around to try and find the cost of replacement coils. Tenner, 9 yeah. right, and then postage on top. And then I've been having a quick look through the Reddits, as one does, and uh, TLDR, it's shite. <laughs> Basically. To put it in more perspective, right, the, the, the first video I did, or the, the, the first coil I used in the video, a couple of weeks after that, the coil failed. I thought, okay, fine. Put the other coil in. Two days. Two days <clears> after <throat> that, I put that coil in. From new, it did that. So, there we go. Uh, I suppose I could have held on to it for another six months and done a video then, but you kind of have to get them at some point, don't you? Yeah, it's a bit um, it's a bit grim though, isn't it? Two coils in what three weeks? Yeah, and the calls are, calls are cost a tenner each. <laughs> I ain't yeah. bothering to get any more. I'll tell you that much. No, that's, that's why I like RBA decks. Well, they kind of is an RBA. That's the thing. Uh, what it, what well, the, the way they're manufactured is they got a tungsten coil sandwiched inside that ceramic, so the coil runs inside it. Okay. Um, 
which is obviously is prone to failure because the, the ceramic is going to expand when it gets hot. That's going to put stress on the coil, isn't it? And it's just going to fracture it. I guess. There we are. We all got yeah. a coil fracture. That's what a problem is. You and don't want to use a lamic. No. As Sorry, opposed to my missus yeah. earlier with her wrist, but there we are. It's not a thing entirely. Yeah. yeah, it's quite, quite. Yes. It, it, yeah, there it, 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 it does appear to be a rather a lot of people having challenges with the old Crixus coils. Yeah. It is fair to say. Now, so there you go. Had I read this before, I might not have bothered, but, you know, I kind of like to do these videos from the perspective of someone who knows nothing about it. There we are. Always away. Yep. Yeah, Lee, Lee Lawless, I, I, I'm sorry to keep mentioning Leanna Lawless, but she's very verbose these days. Um, she's never trusted ceramic. Remember fish tanks. I remember. I remember. I remember fish tanks. I mean, they've never gone out of fashion. Ceramic fish tanks. You couldn't see the fish, no. though, could you? That that no, no. Like, that would basically be a sink, wouldn't it? Or a toilet. Or a, toilet. Or a fridge. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, oh, well, I do have ceramic pans, and I I, I find them very good indeed. You can't vape um, them, though, Mark. No. Well, I, yeah, I could always smash one up and you know do something. No. Um, <laughs> yes, you but don't ceramic use pans, though. You eat fresh air, don't you? No, I uh, still cook. You know. Oh yes. How yes. do you cook fresh air? Well, what you do is you get a really big pan and you waft a load of air in it and put the lid on. Give it, you know. Two seconds at uh, regular five. <laughs> you know, old money. Cover it in the rain overnight. Yeah, regular fine. five. There's a man <laughs> that showed his age. It's going back a bit. The old regular. Yeah, but yeah, not not very. Um, not it appears to be a jet taking, taking off. For him, <laughs> yeah, no, which is Dave Dawn vaping. He's I'm, got I'm in Newcastle Airport. That's the trouble. Put his <laughs> microphone on the end of his mug. Um, now, Tony P said um, that uh, Cantalon cotton is all you need. Well, yeah, I do like um, the NI200 or, or stainless steel. Let's, let's steel. put it this way. Actually, the reason that I picked up that particular tank to do a video on is because I like to look for something a bit unusual. You know, once you've seen as many tanks with a bit of can fall on a bit of cotton, you've seen, you know, you, you kind of start thinking, oh, I want something a bit different. So, there we go. Tungsten. Tungsten, tungsten, try tungsten. Lal's got load of, loads of it in our lungs. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, you can vape that, can you? Apparently. Mm. She's one woman with one desire. She can be the bionic woman. We can rebuild her. Can we fix her? Yes, we can! Not bacon crumble. It's not the Great British Bake, obviously. The, uh, it's the great vapor trials vape off um but we must touch on uh, a week because it's, it's sunday isn't it, the 22nd god i thought you were going to see a mary Berry there we've got, <laughs> we've, got the, uh, we've got the horizon program haven't we next weekend yes oh yeah um, so we shall be discussing that on monday's show i suppose yes. i better watch it then yes i'll yeah, put it on the, i've got it on the planner yes it's on at 9 30 on sunday night does that mean i've yeah. got to watch it yes Right. Yeah. Now, Get strangely point. enough, it said record series when I clicked on it. So uh, I'm well, not sure yeah. if it's that one off. Or if it's a couple no, of that'd be the series of Horizon, wouldn't it? Yes. Possibly. I do. I do like Horizon. It used to be really good in the seventies as well. Horizon. Yeah. Always good stuff. I, I tell you what, for a man of twenty-one Remember years, for, for a man of twenty-one <laughs> years, you uh, you certainly know your vintage. Oh, I do. In the seventies, you were three. Uh, I was, uh, yeah. Three? I'm, I'm getting uh, on a bit. You're not getting on that much, mate. <laughs> in, in the 70s, I was married. Yeah, well, I wasn't, no. I was still toddler. Oh, That's because yeah. you were three. Late late 70s. I used to watch a lot of scientific stuff on our black and white telly. <laughs> uh, there you go. Enough anyway, to it, so, no, never mind. Horizon, yeah, hopefully it's going to be, uh, hopefully it's going to be a, a good show. It, uh, well, I'm I'm kind of hoping it is. I'm kind of hoping it is because uh, Mosley's been vaping, don't you know, on eighteen milligram stuff, and apparently he isn't anymore. So obviously he didn't get addicted. Mm. So that's kind of good. And my understanding is that Sarah Trigger Lit Sarah Jakes was was kind of 
around and about while they were filming in London. So Shady kicked 17 shades of sherbet out of anybody that was going to get it wrong. Because she's like that. She's a good lass. So, you know, I fingers crossed it'll be canny. We'll see. We'll see. And if it's not, we'll let you know. If it yes. is, we will as well. Because we'll go that no. way. He did do a piece on Trust Me, I'm a Doctor, didn't he? Um, he did. A while back, which was quite good. Uh, it was fairly balanced. So it, it, it'd be interesting to see what he comes up with this time. Yeah. Well, so anyway, we'll bring it down next week. Do bear in mind he's a member of the RCP, you know. Mm. They have 32,000 doctors and he's a member. He's, he's a member of the RCP. And that, uh, that publication was a statement of consensus through all 32,000 of them. Simon Chapman, stick that up your arse and fart it. <laughs> and as for the other fella, mm. well, what can I say? Right, okay. ship, ship, ship that all, okay. Might be one, then. Go on, carry on. No, no, it's all right. I'm going to kick my key out. I don't know. You know, we're going to need another 45 years yet before we find out whether these things will do you any damage. But as far as I can see, gummy bears going in your lungs can't be good for you. And you know what I'm saying, like, if everybody takes up vaping, how am I going to get the money out of Big Pharma? I'll have to buy a bike because I'll not be able to afford to drive a car, which I can't anyway because I'm thick as shit. Sorry. On that note, I'm going to do another video thing. This is on an atomizer I actually do like. Hello, welcome to another review. Now this time round we're going to be uh, concerning ourselves with the uh, the Wismec Theorem by uh, Jabo. You can see that sitting on its uh, its cousin, the uh, the Roller, which has got matching O-rings and that sort of thing. So you know the drill, don't you? Yeah, you're going to sit and look at me gurning mug. Uh, and then we'll go to go down there there specifically right there you can't see what I'm pointing at so I don't know what the hell I'm doing it for um, but we'll go down there and then we look at it close in its box and things and then once we've looked at it in its box and things uh, we'll come in and I'll vape it with my gooding mug again so uh, yeah all that stuff okay here's the box then it comes in there we are. I haven't put the. You've seen these plastic box things before, right? It's nothing new, is it? So, you get instructions, uh, which basically tell you how to assemble the thing, um, how to fill it, that sort of stuff. You know, the usual sort of thing you expect to see. Okay, so in the box, you get one spare Pyrex tube, you get one stainless steel sleeve, which is quite nice actually. It's sort of in keeping with the design of the uh, notch coil. Quite pretty, quite pretty indeed. And it also has a glass inside there as well. I don't know if you can make that out. So basically nothing comes flying out through these channels here because that wouldn't really hold juice very well, would it? Kind of makes sense. Uh, you get a spare notch coil, which we'll cover in a bit more detail in a while. And you get the tank itself there. And you also inside get some spares. You get some O-rings, you get your allen key, you get some grub screws, and you get an airflow control ring for dual coils. Uh, the single coil one, which I currently have, is supplied in situ. Let's put that to one side. Let's have a look at the actual atomizer. So we have a drip tip, which is a Pyrex Affair, a stainless steel cup, and O-rings. This is a very tight drip tip. Once you get on there, it's, it's a job to get it off. So that's why you saw it sort of jutting out a little bit, because... I've already done one take of this and I was sitting here for five minutes trying to get the drip tip out. Right. Anyway, uh, this has been used and it's been used quite extensively. That's why the coil is a little bit on the black side. Um, it's not gone or anything. It's just because it's been used. Um, now, actually, before I do that, let's just clarify. What you do is you can just pop this off, okay? And inside here, you will see the notch coil itself and you'll see four post holes three posts with four holes um, if I pop the bottom off he's going to try and do that carefully God, gee. these o-rings are pretty good to be honest they're, they're very tight right, let's have a look at the deck so as you can see there's the notch coils this is the one that come pre-installed with it uh, we'll look at a close up on the clean one in a minute you know, one that hasn't been used. Um, this has still got some life in it. I don't really want to take it out just yet. 
Here is where you fill your liquid. Um, bit of a pain if you've got dual coils, but you could stick a syringe down. This is where the cotton goes. You'll see all that in a while. Um, you've got some fairly sizable holes here for the posts. Let's look at the back because you can see better. Uh, you've got a slit at the top there for the two and then you've got one individual. So you're not limited to using these notch coils, or not at all. No, you can put your own coils in if you so wish and you'll fasten them down with these grub screws here. Um, you know, you'd build it in a normal manner. You would build uh, a dripper, for example. You'd put your coils in. Um, one thing worth bearing in mind, actually, Actually, no, it's not worth bearing in mind because it's completely non-relevant. That's your positive, that's your negative, like you would expect. These two are negative, like you would expect on a dripper. Um, so you would put one coil again across, you know, the left-hand one and the right-hand one or whatever, uh, left to me, right to you. Um, you know, you know how to call a dripper at this point. If you don't really know how to call things up, I suggest you look at a video I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, anyway, so that's the deck. Let's look at the top assembly here. Now, you will notice that there's this plastic baffle here as well, which does afford some, some degree of airflow for the coil coming from behind it. Not a lot, but some. Um, and it's required to remove this baffle in order to fill using the fill hole, because what happens is basically this will sit on top thusly, like that. So that's basically the uh, tank assembled without the, uh, the Pyrex tube. Okay. Now, at the top here, what we have is we have airflow control, which is achieved by spinning this here. Okay. Only a little bit. You can't spin it too much. But also we have this ring here. Now, in the spares kit, we see one of these, but with an extra notch cut out where my, uh, my finger is here. This finger, the one that's tapping. There's another notch there, so you can put two coils in it. Um, but as standard, it comes with the single coil airflow ring and uh, the baffle. And you can see now the baffle has got, um, let's see if I can illustrate because you're looking straight into a black void here. It's kind of hollow, okay? Um, and that is also screwed into place. So in order to change this out, you need to undo these screws and you can remove this baffle and then you're good to go. But to be fair, it's working quite well single coil mode. Now what you can do, you can adjust the airflow further by the way you position this ring here. So if you want your ring to be tight, I mean your airflow to be tight, you just close that off like so. Uh, you get the idea. Once you've got that to position you like, I like fully open, which is that. You get your top section and you just screw that down. Now, keep in mind that you can knock the airflow control while you're screwing this down, so it's always worth checking at the bottom. And you can see there, I have actually moved it ever so slightly, so I don't know if I'll be able to... No, I can't, because it does lock it down pretty tight, so I need to undo this so slightly, um, then I can adjust, and then I can do it back up again. That'll do me. So there we go, and then you pop your drip tip in the top. That's pretty much good to go. There we go, that clip in. It's a standard 510 drip tip, so you can get pretty much anything you like in there. So anyway, let's have a closer look at these notch coils, shall we? Now here's one in the packet. Now it does come pre-wicked um, out of the box, the, the whole tank. So you're, you're basically good to go, just fill the thing up and, you know, Bob your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. But um, here is an unsullied notch coil, so I, 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 I'm going to try and get this as close as I dare. Let's have a look at that. So what this is basically is a stainless steel tube. It's incredibly, it's an incredibly thin stainless steel tube, and you can see I'm grabbing it by the legs. Now the legs appear to be, I don't know how they're attached, if they're soldered on or what. Um, obviously it's not going to be lead based solder because that would be silly, so if it is solder, it would probably be, I'll say, silver based or something, but I really don't know how it's uh, how it's attached there. And you can see there's a, a massive amount of cotton through this. Now, one of the advantages of this design is that you can really stuff this full of cotton because it's a tube. Now, you're not going to knock your coils out of alignment or anything like that, so you can really go gung-ho in your cotton. So that, that's, that's a good thing. Now, what this basically gives you is quite a large surface area. The idea is that it will perform 
much like a Clapton coil or whatever, or, or twisted coil or what have you. It's trying to give you the most surface area you possibly can get in a coil form factor. Um, it's a very clever design actually, and it's very interesting. And this is certainly the reason I picked up the Theorem tank, because I really wanted to have a look at these things. Uh, the, the notch calls are available separately, but they're a bit hard to get hold of at the time of recording this. So let's go back to my tank then. You can see the coils have been pre-installed. I've not fiddled with this at all, but as I said previously, you can pop your own coil on if you so wish. Not really a problem. Um, let's measure this coil out, actually. I get a measuring device thing, which I should have pre-prepared. But not to worry, we can get that pretty quick. <sighs> right. So, let's get this and we'll screw this on. I hope I can see what I was doing in it, really. There we are. Right. There we are. I'm getting. 1.86 ohms. That's interesting because it should be a lot lower than that. I think it's the usage, um, basically. But it should be, I think, around about 0.5 ohms. But whatever. I'm going to be swapping out, I think, for the new one anyway, um, given I've seen this reading. So let's turn that off. While we're here, let's have a little play with swapping a coil out, shall we? Now, I'm not going to put my own build on this because the whole point of this is to do it as an out-of-the-box experience as such, okay? Uh, I might do an update at some point as and when I do put my own coil on, but uh, for now, I'm not going to worry about that. Tell you what, that's not very tight down on there. It's come loose somehow. Maybe that was the problem. Let's, let's adjust that before I... Uh... Ah! That's more like it. That's a 0 0.2. Okay, so that was the problem. The um, the Allen key had just come a little bit loose. So I'm not going to swap this coil out because it's still good. Uh, I'm still getting flavour off it and everything. So there we are. Let's just make sure it's nice and short down. So 0 0.2 ohms. Um, that's worth noting if you get one of these, get the Allen key out. Just make sure that's nice and tight. Okay, because Otherwise, you're not going to get a good connection. So I'm not going to re, re uh, put the notch coil in because, you know, what's the point? Let's just wick her up instead. So what you do, you get a massive amount of cotton. You get some moderately sized scissors. Snippy snippies. We put this one side and we'll just uh, cut a thick old wedge of cotton out. There we are. Thick old wedge of cotton. We roll her up. Let's put it so the viewers can see, Matt, because that would be clever, wouldn't it? There we go. And you just pull it through. Let's give it a bit of an untwist. So, so, hang on, let's just cut that little bit off while I've got my horrible mitty fingers over it. There we are. Just fluff it out a little bit. And then you basically just pop your cotton in these channels here. It's pretty straightforward to build, actually, I and mean, it's quite nice. There we go. So what you do is you... Uh, I'm going to have to do it so I can see, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. You just pop your, your tank over the top. There you are. Job's done. So what you do then is you get your juice. In which case, I'm going to use some Muffin Man, because I happen to have it ready. And you just soak the bejesus out of this cotton. You really do. Um, stick it down the fill port at the back there. There we go. And you fill it up. It doesn't hold a massive amount of liquid, to be honest. By the time this cotton soaked it up, this will soon go down. If you, I, I don't know if you can see, but it's you know it's starting to soak up. It does take a little bit of time. Your first fill on this, you know, don't expect to be up and vaping within two minutes. All right. You've really got to make these saturated. You know, just got some cotton, uh, some some liquid down there, down here. You know, really just go gung ho on it. 
what you don't want to be doing is filling it up past this this plate here because the uh, the baffle will soon come in and sit on top of that da -da 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 -da. like that that's it we're ready to go so we know what we do at this point don't we we go back to me vaping it with my grinning mug cinema okay so we've now got the thing well i say built it's really built because i've taken it from the build it comes in the box i've got it wicks and i've got it filled with juice let's vape it not exactly what you would call massive clouds but it is a single coil mode uh, it's still reading 0 0.21 actually on this It is very flavoursome. Really flavoursome. Now I've got this running in stainless steel mode at the moment. Um, 460 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Let's just take it up to 560 because that's kind of where I like to be. That's better. That's much better. Mmm. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Matt, you did a review on the avocado and you kind of slagged it off a little bit. Yeah, I did. Um, this is very, very similar to the avocado in that it's basically a Genesis. You know, it's, it is a Genesis. It's got the coil at the top. I mean, more so, it's got stainless steel coil. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a mesh, but it's not fun. You could put a mesh coil in it. I, I'm not going to do that because I really can't be asked. Um, and you drip your cotton down into your juice. Or you droop it down. You don't drip it. You don't drip cotton. If you're dripping cotton, you're doing it wrong. Um, you droop your cotton down into your juice. And then it sucks it up. And uh, then you vape it. You know how it goes. Um, now, the problem I had with the avocado wasn't so much that. It was the filling method, which was a bit of a nuisance. Now, this kind of suffers from the same thing, but they fought it out a little bit better. Where is you pull the entire top bit off, and the baffle comes out in one it, at, with it where the avocado it, you had to take the top off and then you had to take the baffle out and then you filled it so that all comes out in one nice clean go i like that and it's pop your you, if you're going to use a dripper you can kind of get a dripper nozzle you know a pipette in there and fill it up but it'll take ages but you can do it you couldn't do that with the avocado so they they kind of improved on that but other than that it's not a great deal of difference now the real star of the show i think here is the notch coil it delivers on its promise of flavor um not so much on the amount of cloud it could do so i you do get two in the box now i could put another one in there but i really don't want to i kind of like it like this because let's be honest it doesn't hold a massive amount of juice i think once you've got your wick saturated and you fill it up you're probably going to get about two million there maybe three okay that's pretty much it i mean does the specs actually say what it will hold um no it don't it doesn't on the box anyway I might do on the website but i ain't going there because i'm lazy it's saturday afternoon for crying out loud you know what do you want mm. so I've had this now for three weeks. I think three weeks. I got it as soon as I released in the UK. Um, I was one of the first ones because I'm sad like that and I like to chop the things. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's gone for its paces. It's travelled with me an awful lot. Now, one of the things it does promise is a leak-free design. No, it ain't. It ain't leak-free. Um, you lay this down on its side for any length of time, it's going to... You, it's going to be, get a bit incontinent and it's, it's going to be a puddle of juice on the floor or on your desk or wherever you put it you know on top of your wallet or your whatever <sighs> yeah it's not terrible by any means i mean i can do that and i can sit here for like 10 minutes and it's not going to dribble anywhere all right but you leave it overnight it's going to leak so keep that in mind it's not entirely leak free um you can see it's really sucking up there's so much cotton in here it just slurps that juice right up. Um, I don't know if you can see the level. But, you know, it's, it's going down. It's going down. Now, if you don't really like the uh, the Pyrex tube, you've got the option of having a stainless steel tube with a Pyrex tube inside it so the juice doesn't pee out all of those holes. 
because that would be silly. Uh, Sony wouldn't be a leak free design then, would it? No, 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 would it wouldn't. No. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you say you, right. Let's let's just get to another point. I'm all over the place today, aren't I? Ah, oh, whatever. Let's go with it. Um, you don't have to run it in temperature control mode. I just am, but I'm going to put it into wattage mode now. In wattage mode, 20 watts. Now, come on now. 60. Let's start for 60. Let's start at 60. I'm only using the Rolo because it matches. It's like handbags and shoes for ladies you know um come on 60 watts 60 59 come on that's, uh, there you go i think these notch calls are good to around about 80 um and then you're going to run a risk of burning them out i've not done that yet but you know i don't really want to i mean potentially these notch calls are going to last for a long time They do cope with flavour changes quite well, to be honest. So 60 watts isn't bad, is it? Um, let's take it up to 70. That's 71, Matt, you plonker. 70. Yeah, not a great deal of difference. I'm going to leave it at 70. I quite like it. Flavour is very good. Um, the weekend keeps up. I've not had a dry hit off this thing ever, not once. Um, that's pretty much all I can say about it, really. I, 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 I've been using an awful lot over these last three weeks, an awful, awful lot, because, you know, it's a new concept, and I really wanted to put it for its paces. And uh, to be honest, I can't see myself stopping using it anytime soon. I will at some point put my own coil in here, but because the notch coils are going pretty well, I'm really not going to rush into that um you know i might even just get a whole batch of uh replacement logicals and maybe put them in other things we'll see uh i'll do a vt on that at some point if i do that yeah hmm. there we go so i think i filled the uh requisite five minutes so uh back to the studio Ta-da. Now, we're on, I think. <laughs> now, it, are we on? Yeah, sorry, I'm just working out this cramp. That's why you're seeing them, not me. <laughs> yes, Matt, Matt has cramp in his leg. He described it as being used for other purposes, apparently. Uh, if that's what you're using your leg for, mate, I'm not surprised it's cramp. Uh, you, know, you, need, but, you need more electrolytes, Matt. That's what it is, more electrolytes. And, and it has the, the wonderful byproduct of softening your knuckles, <laughs> which could be useful for then massaging the cramped up leg or something like that. Something like um, that, yeah. Yes, I'm liking the look of those notch coils. I've got to say, what about uh, you, Marco? Yes, well, I, I, I obviously didn't watch the VTOs going out, but I looked at it earlier. Um, yes, a rather interesting little device, I have to say. Um, <laughs> I mean, how much how much cotton can you get in a mod? <laughs> we we did describe it as something, did we not? Yes. Yes. What you normally no. get down a feminine hygiene aisle. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but you did. Um, can I just bring up something that was put in the chat? Go on. Um, Bob the Pearson. Hell? Bob Pearson has asked, does any org take take old vaping kit? He's got loads of K phones, mechs. Vivian Overs, etc. Seems a shame just to bin them. Bob, go on Twitter and look up Paid Forward. Uh, there are Paid Forward organisations springing up here, there and everywhere that will take kit for beginners, particularly in New Zealand. Follow Mario Aglover, ask her, she'll give you the right, because I can never remember how it's spelled, because I don't speak New Zealandish. Uh, so, yes, now my hare am I. Um, Yes, so paying it forward is always a good idea. Yep. The folks that want it, those that need it, you know what I mean? Those that need it. Because, uh, yeah, you know, if we keep on paying it forward, there'll never be a need for a medicinal e-cig. I think that's a good thing. That's just me. I could be wrong. I'm not, but I could be. Oh, I've recovered from my cramp now. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> that bloody hurt. That's all I can yeah, say. I, Jesus. I t <laughs> I, I often used to wake up with cramp. Yeah. My hands was always like that. Did it? Huh. <laughs> were you uh, were you gripping your mod there, Dave? Was that what you were doing? 
<laughs> something like that, yeah. Chew of mud. <laughs> Don't uh, mention it, my juice. Anyway, there it you go. Was a yeah. It was my personal electronic nicotine inhalation system. Right, <laughs> just to address a couple of questions in chat. No, I don't know how you're going to stick a second coin in it because of the wicking holes. Something that did occur to me as well, but I didn't mention it in the VT, so you know, whatever. Well, we're going to have a go. We're going to have a go. See yeah, how much go. cotton you See can actually ram into it. I reckon you can get more cotton than juice in there. There's more cotton than juice. Uh, <laughs> He was one man with more cotton than juice. Right. And I ain't talking about Marco. I would just like to address Jay Summers here. No, I wasn't vooping. I was standing on my bloody legs because I flaming hurt. <laughs> there you are. Something like that. Was he, was, was he accusing you of vooping? I think he was. Vooping in the studio? That's I'll tell crazy. you what, I've got, a bloody no, long, I've got a bloody long finger if I can press the button from there. Yes. Have a, <laughs> the, the vooping part is the other side of this telly. Vooping parlor. The vooping parlor. <laughs> I love that nomenclature. The vooping parlor. <laughs> Excuse me, darling. I'm just getting to the vooping parlor. I should be 45 minutes. Oh. oh. I'm not back in half an hour. Excuse me. Please. Excuse me. Tony P has just shouted at me as vertical dual coils. <laughs> and I just probably no, won't miss it. You could do that. You could probably do that. I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Um, With a pencil. No, no, it's not stuck. Constipated oh. mathematician, yes. Uh. <sighs> right, yeah. Should we should we do the time lapse thing now, shall we? Yeah, do go, the time go, lapse. Yeah, we'll do the time lapse. Yeah, yeah. There we we're go. over running. We're over running. We're over running. We're over running. <laughs> 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 And back to the studio. Uh, I think that was the last of the milking we can do of the v of the vape expo footage. <laughs> we really have milked it. We had to put the time lapse on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to be done. Yeah, I did notice that I was sat down quite a lot on that seat <laughs> for a lot of the time. I did actually um, notice I when I was when I was doing those uh, standalone interview bits that I put up on Facebook yesterday. That yeah. you did most of them, so that's probably why you sat down most. Possibly. Oh. I did a few. I did a few. We all, we all did some. We yeah, all did he, some. I, I, th I um, think he did the most. Right, there we go. Yeah. And Dave Kitson did say he, he did what he did last year, which was go right up to the camera really, really close, but I didn't see it. So I, I would have slowed it down just for effect, but there you go. Um, so, yes, there you go. That was it. Hopefully, we shall be bringing you details soon of Vapor Expo 2016 Part 2 in October soon. You mean that yes. was just a warm up? Oh Christ! Yeah, that was the warm up. Yeah, that was that was the pre show. <laughs> that was the Vapor start. Expo 2016 was the pre show. <laughs> the main the main course in October. I cannot wait for pudding. Yeah, and, but don't forget there is the Vape Collective at the end of May, the Bank Holiday weekend in May, uh, and then of course for the Vape Fest, those days of Vape Fest in August too. Um, and I did hear something that's going on in Leeds in June, but I need to get the information on that. Leeds in Yorkshire. Yeah. Aye, at Royal Armouries City. At Royal yeah. Armouries in Leeds, yeah. in Yorkshire, yeah. at Royal Armouries, that'll be all right. One of the it, guys, nice. one of the guys got... at Vapor Expo told me about it, so I'll, I shall find out. 
Is that right? No, yeah. that'll be good, that. I'd go there on the bike. I could Sean, do that. I could. Sean Fair, brother, is asking, where's it likely to be? I would hazard a guess it'd be back at Birmingham again. That'll be Fake uh, Expo 2. I, yeah, I believe Fake Expo 2 will be at Birmingham NEC. Yeah. It yeah. will be at Birmingham NEC. I, I'm, I'm, conf I'm unanimous in that. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's where it'll be. I, I think, actually, I think the lads were negotiating it during the course of uh, Vapor Expo 1, as it were. Yes. I, they were busy. They were busy, boys. Did a bloody brilliant job and all. They did. So we'll get Jay and Lee on, or one of them, or both of them on the show, uh, as soon as they are able to come and tell us more, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I yeah. think that's uh, Vapor Expo 1 is really milked now. Don't you? Uh, uh, I'd yes. say I feel five minutes, but it's a bit more than that. Just a bit. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. <sighs> so, Dave, what have you got coming up on Thursday? Uh, me dinner. <laughs> uh, is it a light uh, snack? Light snack, yes. Uh, no, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at the Durham study. I want to talk about that. I think that's quite important. I'm, I may, may, I may be talking a little bit about the uh, ash nonsense that's been going on. And unusually for me, there may well be some juice reviews occurring. For <gasps> I too have got nowhere near as much as Mark will, but I do have juice. Um, and there's this this kind of other stuff I want to be talking about as well. Stuff that, because Thursday will be the day before. Won't it? Mm, yes. It'll be the last day of freedom. So yeah. what I really want to do on Thursday, because it's the last day of real freedom, uh, is I really, really want to celebrate the VIP, but I also want to take the piss out of what's going to be happening, you know, with advertising restrictions and stuff like that. So it's just basically, I want to have a party on Thursday. I just really want to have a party, last day of freedom, enjoy life, blow out, drink some gin, green oils, Thank you, Judy. Um, vape a lot. Keith will be here. Uh, he's got new juices to try. And we're just going to have a party. So come along. Bring bring your vaping equipment with you. Bring some alcoholic beverage, if that is your ilk, if that is what you like. Or non-alcoholic beverage, if that's what floats your boat. Which, yeah, that's what boats float on. Non-alcoholic. You know what I mean. We'll have a party on Thursday night. You know, we'll bring chat in and just generally have a party. It'll be good. Last night of freedom. Condemned I'm, man. That kind I may of thing. well take my laptop up to Scotland with me and uh, and join on Thursday. That, that would be brilliant. That I'll tell you be, what. This, this time, put your trousers on first. Yeah, <laughs> cheeky. Here, here's an idea. Why don't what? you all, people that are watching on Thursday, when you watch on Thursday, tweet pictures of you watching VTTV celebrating <laughs> your last day of freedom and put that them up on the Twitter. That on that day Twitter sphere? Yeah. We'll do that, shall we? Why not? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Sab's just posted a link. I'm going to click on it. Where is it? Ha! Right. Uh, I don't know if I can share this. I am going to try. Jeff A. Steyer has said... Yeah, I'm looking at that now. The FDA recognises that some tobacco products have the potential to be less harmful than others but more research is needed. I mean, seriously, this was in uh, answer to his question that said, Dear at FDA Tobacco, are e-cigs less harmful than smoking cigarettes to the individual user? A simple yes or no will do. The answer came, the FDA recognises that some tobacco products have the potential to be less harmful than others, but more research is needed. That's, that's a bot, is what that is. That is a bot. Uh-huh. I kid you not, the FDA bot is just a complete total. Well, the FDA is a complete total, isn't it, really? I shall say no more than that. It seems unfair to say any more than that, really. Set of wangers. Are we live still? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, well. Never mind, eh? It's true, though, isn't it? Yes, so that was what was tweeted. Thanks for that, Sav. Oh, I can't get good. back to chat now. I don't know how to get back to chat. Ah, oh, well. That's, that's oh, not going to end for tonight, shall we? Should we knock on the head? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're not doing two and a half hours tonight. Oh, no, 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 not tonight. No, no, no. 
I'm sorry to say this, Dave, but I've got work in the morning. How dare you, Luke? Language? Language? How dare you use language <laughs> like that? For fuck's sake. Some of us have to do that these days, Dave. No, 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 no. I want nothing. No, I want nothing to do with that. I'm still waiting for that big vaping money. Yeah, see, if we had big vaping money, we wouldn't have to do that other other thing, and we could just do this. But unfortunately, we have to fund this by doing the other thing. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. you're watching your language, Mark. Well. Yeah. Yes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. See you on Thursday then. Aye. Right. Yes, see you next Thursday, FDA. No, this Thursday. <laughs> well, it's the next Thursday to come, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. So it is, in fact, as far as the FDA is concerned, see you next Thursday. On that bombshell. <laughs>